Stampers. My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me this afternoon. Well, I have a second Christmas card for you. Once I got into them, I can't get away. <laughs> so I have um, a, and a different kind of technique that I want to show you um, that gives uh, a, just a very interesting look to your card. So let's just get started. Okay, here is my card. And this is a prototype, so it's the first one that I've done. And so I'm going to change a few things. Um, first, I want to show you a little bit of what I'm using. I am using this Christmas paper. Okay, this paper is called Tis the Season, and it's six by six paper. Um, and it is uh, a lot of small patterns, but they're very pretty. And there's the equivalent of one 12 by 12 sheet of each pattern that has front and back together of all of these patterns. And now I've gone through them a little bit here so you get the idea. But they're very pretty, very traditional colors. It's um, cherry cobbler and uh, shaded spruce. Um, and it is also got um, real red, garden green, shaded spruce, whisper white, and basic black are what are in here. And so I elected to use a, um, I'll show you the pieces now. This is scary. This is, <laughs> I'm showing you a couple things here. But what I want to show you on here is do you see how these pieces of paper are shiny? My upline, Wanda Williams, sent out a little notification about a woman who was demonstrating what she was calling faux uh, embossing. And so that you got this, this shiny look, but without doing any of the embossing. And what she did was she took paper and not necessarily designer series paper. I decided to do the designer series paper and plain old packing tape. And she covered the paper with the packing tape, tape and then cut out her, um, her images with dyes. And I thought that is such a clever idea to give us something really different nice and shiny so i tried mine and you'll see i was some very successful in some parts and not so successful in others here is a piece of paper that i covered with packing tape not very well now this corner or this edge was pretty good this corner was pretty good and i think you'd have to get a little practice at it um, and i ended up being the most successful doing it on like a craft sheet. This is a laminated sheet. So I'm going to try and demonstrate for you how that gets done. So I'm just going to pick a piece of paper here. This that's got some, um, or let's do this one. It's got the bells on it. That's kind of fun. So what I did was I just took a length of this packing tape and then to the best of my ability, I came right along the edge of the paper and put down the packing tape and smoothed it out. And so you can see there is that piece of paper covered pretty well with that backing tape. Now, it, depending on what you were going to cut out, um, you might want more than that. So I took to trying to do the whole six by six sheet. And you have to have exactly the right light and you have to butt it up or just slightly overlap the one end. And I got to the point that I was pretty decent at it. Now, I missed that one. I'm gonna bring this up so you can see it. 
you can see where there's a gap. I thought I was overlapping and I was actually short. Now on this design, it doesn't matter because I cut out my circles and I knew I was going to put a cluster of material up here at the top. So I just made sure that this little gap was underneath all of this stuff. Um, now if you wanted to, you could even, it would be kind of fun to do this on paper, say like this, and cut out the Merry Christmas so that it would have a pattern on it. it looks like it's been embossed. And then on these ends, all I did was secure them over the back of my paper. Makes the paper a, a little bit stiff, a little heavier. And then on mine, what I did, um, I did this sheet, and I did this sheet, and I did one more, but then didn't use much of the material. Yeah, there it is, this side. So this, these are the sheets and the sides that I was going for, for, for my design here. But I thought it was very interesting if you had a bell or you had another little circle, and I used a punch. Now, it wasn't very happy about going through <laughs> the thickness of the paper and the tape, but it did it. And so I have pre-cut out my two circles, and you can see on this one, I don't have any tape on the top of that one. And on this one, uh, let's see, my tape is missing from the top on this side. So uh, I was able to get my circles cut out though, and I think it'll do just fine for making my card. Then for the inside of the card, what I did was I cut two more strips of the shiny paper from the edges where I found that I had done a pretty good job of putting down my tape. And this is about three quarters of an inch, and this is about, oh, half an inch. And then I put some of this gold twine on there to just add to bringing the inside to the outside, or the outside to the inside. Anyway, so I wanted to show you that, and you do get better at it. Now, that's not perfect, but it is a little bit better than that job, certainly. And um, I think what I would do is get some packing tape that's as wide as possible. So you could get one shot at getting some of the tape down um, and then cut that strip out and then do your die cutting, uh, whatever it is you're going to do, punch out, whatever. On, on that piece of paper. Anyway, it was very different and kind of fun to mess with. So what I have then is I have a cherry cobbler base that is four and a quarter by 11 scored and folded at five and a half. And then I have two pieces of whisper white that are four by five and a quarter, one for the inside and one for the outside. Now on this one, I embossed that white piece of paper with the winter snow, one of the new embossing folders in the holiday catalog. And it gave me these delicate little um, snowflakes uh, on my white piece of paper, which I think is very nice. So for this one, I decided that I would run this through this one, which is Evergreen Forest. It's a 3D embossing folder, and it gives you pine trees. And that way, I could show you more than one kind of way to put these together. So that's what I did with that, and I've already run mine through to save a little bit of time. And then I'm using two stamps. One says, Happy Holidays, and the other one says, May Magic and Wonder Bloom This Holiday. And those two stamps uh, come out of the poinsettia petals, uh, May Magic and Wonder, and um, Happy Holidays. It has a very nice Merry Christmas. Thank you for making this a wonderful season. Warm wishes from our home to yours, which I used the other day. And I used um, the die. I think it was for this one. And I took out what I, I'll show you what I did. Um, 
I'm, I wanted some leaves and greenery um, to cover this. So what I did was I used several different dyes, the birds and branches bundle. I cut out a couple of these petals because they, and actually there were um, holly leaves in there. And then from, let's see, one of the other ones, you, you need a piece of, I used blue, the, the shaded spruce because I put some of the garden green in here and I didn't like the contrast. So you need a piece of paper. This is what I used to cut out all of my leaves. Um, this was the poinsettia leaf. This is the one, I think this is from birds and, this is for sure from birds and branches. And I'm thinking this other one is from Forever Flourishing. And so I used basically um, a three inch strip, we'll do it here, uh, for the full length there. So that's how much scrap of the uh, shaded spruce you need to cut leaves. Then I used a piece of scrap of red to cut out my berries. And then um, I have all of my pieces that I cut out. And then I took a few of those gold leaves out of the Forever Greenery uh, foil designer paper here. I just took some of the green leaves out of there, or the gold leaves out of there, since I was doing this kind of in a gold motif. So uh, that is what I used to, to have the pieces for my card here. So let's just go ahead and do this. Now I'm also using some of our gold twine from the Forever Greenery Ribbon Pack. And this, well, I'm, I'm, I started to use, on this one I used this gold ribbon. This is also from a ribbon pack, and it might be Forever Greenery. And then I thought it would be kind of fun to put a red bow on there. And, and I probably should have then used a red base uh, to do this. But I've got cherry cobbler and I'm going to go ahead and use it because I think the reds here are close enough. Okay, so what we need to do is get our two baubles here and get them put so that the piece that doesn't have any tape on it is towards the top. Now, um, what I'm going to do is, um, I learned a lesson while doing this other one, uh, that I need a piece of this twine to uh, go on the back of this, and I'm going to secure that with a um, dimensional so that it really doesn't move and that is right where I want this to be and I would like that twine to be pretty close together there so I'm just going to tack a dimensional right over that. Now on this other one I also need a bit of this twine but I already can tell I've got too much on here. And then on this one, I'm going to have this one be the one from the top, and you don't need a very big piece, just enough to hold this down. Let's see, where is my edge that I don't want to show? It's right up here. So I need to tack this down, and I'd rather have a little bit more here than not enough. So I'm going to use a dimensional to hold this piece of twine in place here. Now, I'm just going to throw a couple of other dimensionals on the back of these little bobbles. There we go. Now, I'm going to attach these um, to the front of my embossed piece. So I'm going to put this one down right about here, sort of more to this edge of the card. 
and then I'm going to grab these two pieces and what I'm going to do is just put down some snail right here on the top. I'm just going to have that go all the way across and secure down this string right behind there and then put this one down up a little bit higher right over here. Now then, I'm going to add some more seal on the back of my card. And I'm going to add quite a bit because this is an embossed piece and uneven edges and all of that. And this can go now right here on the front of my card. There we go. And I have lots of people that don't celebrate Christmas, um, celebrate other kinds of things. So I generally like to do several of the Happy Holidays cards uh, for those folks. And on here, on the inside, I'm just going to take these two pieces and put some uh, seal on the back of these strips and put them in place on my card that's going to go on the inside and get some seal on this one and put that and what I did was I just put it at the top of the card and just butted it right up against that other piece of paper just like that. Now then what I can do is use my scissors on the back here to make this a perfect fit by cutting this off right at the edge of the card and there we go. Now on this one I'm going to be using the twine again just to add a little element. So I'm going to need some seal across the back of this card. A couple of rows of that. And I'm going to anchor this piece of twine so that it goes right down the middle between those two pieces and I'm just going to tap those down so that they stick. Now nothing will stick to my silicone mat so I can do that and then bring it up around and come down a second time just to make it a little bit more substantial. And there we go. And then I'm just going to nip off that piece and the inside of my card is almost ready. Now then, let's do a little bit of stamping. So in my pieces for my card, I have this strip that is one inch wide and I've got my Happy Holidays and let's see, I think I did this in the uh, shaded spruce color and I think I'm going to do that again. So take my Happy Holidays and stamp that right here on this end of my piece of paper as straight as I can get it. using my silicone mat here for cushion. <laughs> and then I use this new stamp that we have, or punch that we have. And I'm going to slide my one inch piece into this end to get this pointed end. Make sure that it's flush against the back here. Pretty much 
where I want it. It doesn't look to me like it's centered, so I'm going to kind of push it over just a here, that looks more like it. Okay, always check it from the back. And punch. And then I've got that real pretty end on one side. Now, what I decided to do was, since this is so short that it would be hard to get it into this tail end, um, it would have to disappear way on the inside. So I just used my trimmer and I cut this edge off straight. So on this end, I just eyeballed about two and a half inches here um, and cut this piece down. And then I thought, um, what I did on this one is I used a dauber and my shaded spruce and went around the edges and got some definition on my tag and then put it right down here on a couple of dimensionals. So I'm going to do that right now. So I've got my Happy Holidays. Now that could be shorter, but this allows me maybe to put a little cluster of uh, rhinestones or something on there for decoration. Okay, so there's the inside of my card, and I have some stamping to do here as well. And on this one, I did that also in the Shaded Spruce. And I've got May Magic and Wonder Bloom this holiday. And I'm going to set that right down here on the inside of my card. And there we have our stamping done. So now this piece is ready with a little bit of seal to go on the inside of my card. nice and decorated for the inside. Now then, I cut out all of these pieces of greenery and this one, after experimenting with that a little bit, I cut out, this one seemed, uh, I could have used the boughs. We have one called, I think it's called Beautiful Boughs or something, but I like the way that one kind of anchored. And then I used some of these leaves from my poinsettia. And I just like their shape as much as anything. And then I also have and you know me, I always cut more than I need. So I have a couple of those kinds of leaves, at least two for each one, and then I cut, in fact, I've got more than that. I, I think I cut enough to make so that I could have three leaves like this for each one if that's what I wanted. So there's my three leaves. Then I have one of these for each of them. And this was the garden green, and I just, I just didn't like the contrast. It was better with the spruce. Okay, so I've got a couple of leaves here that I'm going to just snip. And for each one, I did a die cut. For each ornament. 
It's got a little bit of sticky on it. So that, that, and that. And then I've got a few little extra pieces if I need them. But I thought that one of the things, um, if I add the gold, and these gold are almost too long, so I'm going to snip off a little bit of that. But if I added a gold coming down, and then this thing of berries, which is way too long, maybe like that, and then um, a sprig of these green flowers or green leaves coming down here like this, so that the top of each of these baubles would have the contrast of the green, the gold, and the red on top. And it brings out what's in the paper, which is nice. And let's see, I have two kinds of gold here. And maybe I'll add this one on this side. And then I've got a couple of these leaves to stick in so that there's plenty of greenery at the top of my little ornaments here that cover everything the way I want. And I'm actually pretty happy with the way that looks. Then I have the choice of putting this gold ribbon back on or putting a real red bow on here and I think I want to try and do the red on this one. Red ribbon here so that I can make, I think I want a bow that's a little bit bigger than that one. So putting this together and making a red bow to go on the top of my ornament and I would like these red tails to come down a little bit. So then I can cut my edges here. There we go. I like the looks of that one right on there. And I think that makes a really pretty ornament top. So I need another red bow. And then I thought uh, that the other thing I might change up is I do have the little bit of gold that's picked up by the, um, by the twine. Um, but I don't think I'm going to use the gold gems on this. I thought maybe on this one I would add some of our red rhinestones to it. So there is a bow for the top of the other one and let me cut that bow down there and that's ready to go there so now I'm just going to quiet the video while I attach all of my little pieces Okay, so there are my two baubles done, and the inside of my card is in there. Our stamping is done, and the only thing we need is any further outside embellishments. And I thought that it would be kind of fun to put red on here. So uh, on this, what I thought I could do was maybe 
put this little tiny piece of greenery right here on the edge of my sentiment just like that and then take three of these little red rhinestones and add them to the top of this greenery in a little cluster and give the impression of the um, like the holly berries. There we go. And then take a few more of these and spread them around on the card. I think like that. And there we go. That is my project for the day. So something fun and a little different, interesting way to get a different look of shine on your card without a whole lot of fuss and muss. Now, you could put just about any shape on there you wanted, and we have lots of other, oh, uh, the snow is glistening, I think is the, the one I'm thinking of that has the ornaments uh, that you could cut out that are different shapes. And just putting that packing tape and then using your dies to cut out your images gives you this kind of a different look. And there's our inside, which I think is lovely. And so there is the project today with a couple of different ways to kind of put one together. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. It was kind of fun to play with this one uh, just because it was a whole different technique. And I'll try to link below the name of the woman who uh, showed this technique of using the packing tape, which I think is just incredibly clever. Uh, in any case, uh, that is my project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. The catalog, the new holiday catalog goes live tomorrow. It's very exciting. So you'll be able to get your hands on some of these papers and embossing folders and the like. Um, and uh, uh, so my prize for the month of August, hard to believe we're talking about August, but my prize for the month of August is uh, a bundle of your choice out of the new uh, holiday or August through December 2020 uh, mini catalog. So, uh, again, that's it for me. Now you've earned all of your coupons in July, so starting tomorrow you can start spending them. <laughs> and uh, you can spend them and maybe get a few treasures out of the new catalog. Thanks again for stopping by. I'll be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye! Bye!